call Mount Gabriel Te Monga here, call Roaring Water Bay uh, Te Awa, uh, no Ireland Aho, call Gaffney Toko Fana, call Owen Toko Ingoa. Kia ora. Um, and uh, my other family uh, is, uh, I guess, uh, my tribe is the, 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 the research, the scientific world, uh, the Stockholm Resilience Center, Future Earth, uh, soon to be Potsdam Institute, um, and also the, the, uh, uh, the Globia and these links between science and the, the rest of society. And this is, this is Roaring Water Bay on the west coast of Ireland, uh, where, where I, was, um, I was born and raised and then moved to England. Uh, where I studied astronautic engineering, spacecraft and satellite design, and then moved into the media and filmmaking and eventually made it um, back into Earth system science um, for the last 15 years. Um, and it's been a great journey. Um, and the work I do, um, I can be, you know, can categorize as, uh, you know, the science of the biosphere, the Earth system, how it's functioning, how it's functioned in the past, how it can function in the future, planetary stewardship and the evolution of uh, planetary awareness and uh, you know, this is I can categorize as um, uh, you know, logos, uh, ethos, and um, and pathos, and uh, uh, and that's that's how we think at the the institutes um, I, I'm involved involved with. Um, on the evolution of planetary awareness, I mean, I've got some good news. We do have some progress here. You know, sustainability, the, the word, um, is, is being used more and more and more. It's on a, um, as Megan was pointing out yesterday, the, the exponential trend is actually a positive one for sustainability. Um, each year, uh, there's, there's more and more awareness of it. Um, but also, we'll remember the negative consequences of exponential trends by, by 2041, if we continue on this trajectory, Every sentence will contain the word sustainable in it. Uh, and uh, by <laughs> and within, within a few decades of that, every word will be sustainable. <laughs> the, the irony is that uh, it's unsustainable. <laughs> but there's, there's, a, there's a further irony. The word exponential is actually on a sustainable trajectory. <laughs> <That> <laughs> And so the work I work, you know, I work on, um, you know, global systems and putting together the synthesis, the big picture, you know, when in climate research, when we talk about a hockey stick in earth system science, we talk about a hockey team and uh, this, this huge acceleration in a single human lifetime, um, this huge acceleration to the point where we're changing the earth system. The earth system is accelerating. It's life, the life support system of our planet is accelerating. There is one reason for that acceleration. It is us. And uh, this is, uh, th th this, is, this is a new part of how the, fun the planet is functioning. Four and a half billion years. We're in an uh, unprecedented state, literally from the 1950s onwards. Um, anyone born before 1945 has lived um, when Earth was in a, a stable state. No one, probably no one here, very few people here have lived in that state. Um, I'm an author on the Living Planet Report, WWF produced uh, recently, um, showing the state of uh, biodiversity loss, 60% loss recently in the, since in the last 40 years. So, um, and we published a report on the global commons, um, and a hundred page report recently. The, the key uh, message that seems to have resonated with people is uh, one sentence in that report. Every child's birthright is a stable, resilient planet. And this, we can now say from the scientific community, this is at risk. Um, so when Tomoho said um, within, um, uh, w opened the, the EHF, uh, a week ago, he said, you know, you're not here representing yourself, you're representing uh, previous generations uh, going back hundreds of years. And uh, those previous generations, 400 generations in the Holocene, have uh, lived on a stable planet. Um, so this led uh, Johan Rockström and team from, uh, from our centre uh, to drive an international collaboration 10 years ago to understand what does this mean, what is the stable state, how, what are the boundaries that keep us in that stable state. They identified nine planetary boundaries um, from climate change, biodiversity, land use, ocean acidification, uh, biogeochemical flows and nitrogen and phosphorus use. And we've gone beyond four of those boundaries. Um, the world is taking a very, very big risk with uh, uh, the future stability of the Earth system. We need to move to a biosphere positive future. Everything we do, every action, every innovation needs to store carbon, not emit it, to purify water and soils, not pollute them, and enhance biodiversity, not destroy it. You know, we published a report 
on an exponential trajectory. How do we get there? How do we, how do, we do this um, uh, back in September, particularly focusing on climate? And this is, you know, this is, this is the good news story. We have all the solutions. We have everything there we need, but it's more about energy, it's more than just energy systems. So we need to change food systems. We need to move to lower our meat consumption. Uh, we need circular economies. All businesses need to be driving circular economies. We need to get that message out as fast as possible um, because we have, you know, have 10 years to halve, halve emissions globally. Halve emissions globally within 10 years. This, this is the challenge of our generation. But also, we must remember that everybody here is talking about economic transformation constantly with black blockchain, with Internet of Things, with artificial intelligence. Um, but you know, so often this conversation doesn't have a compass point. You know, we talk about economic transformation and preparing for it because we know it's going to come. How do we align that with halving emissions uh, within a decade? And this is possible. I mean, just for electricity, we're on the right trajectory. If we keep doubling solar and wind every four years as we are right now and stop investing in fossil fuels, then we will have 50% globally, globally 50% of electricity production from, um, from wind and solar and renewables by 2030. That we're on the right trajectory. How do we keep on that trajectory? How do we think of the businesses that scale in that way? We um, are launching an accelerator to think exponentially and uh, to drive that, uh, that transformation. And we want to speak to, to you about, about that. But the really big picture here is, uh, is New Zealand and planetary boundaries. Um, you know, can New Zealand operate its economy, its society within planetary boundaries? That's not a rhetorical question. C can it? Yes, it can, and um, so I, and we, we, we believe it can. The, the, one, the other good news from science is across the board, um, we can think it, take a systems approach and we can apply that um, and the solutions are all there to, um, to live within planetary boundaries. And uh, one of the most remarkable thing, things about the conversation over the last few days here is that we started, started talking about how, um, how New Zealand, um, how we can create a partnership um, to, to, to drive that change, to think about how we can apply planetary boundaries to New Zealand. And uh, that's, that's probably the most exciting thing um, I'm thinking about right now. So thank you.